Toastmasters. Today, Cheryl will be giving her fourth speech out of the Advanced Communicator Series, The Entertaining Speaker. And today's speech is a dramatic talk. And the speech title is Swim or Stay Ashore, My Deep Sea Excursion in, a, in Cozumel, Mexico. Sounds exciting. Uh, her manual objectives develop an entertaining dramatic talk include vivid Im imagery, characters, and dialogue, and deliver the speech in an entertaining manner. Personally, she's going to work on humor and vocal variety and limit the use of notes. Jeff, please, five to seven minutes. And without further ado, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, fellow Postmasters. Should I swim? Or should I stay ashore? That is the question. The year is December. The month is December. The year is 2010. I'm heading off on my annual cruise, Caribbean cruise vacation. Doesn't everybody want to go to the Caribbeans and then figure it away from Michigan winters? That's my idea of escaping away from the winters in Michigan, long, bitter cold. So my husband and I embark on yet another journey on our cruise. So it's December 6th. We've just arrived in beautiful Miami, Florida. Our first stop before we board our ship on the 7th. So we're surrounded by balmy trees and breezes, palm trees everywhere. It's a small bit of heaven before you even go on your trip. So I'm excited about my excursion. I've decided that this time this is going to be different than any other year. I am going to do something that I have never done before. <coughs> Some people might call it a bucket list. It's a before I die list for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is something I'm going to do before I die. So I decide. Do I tell Michael what my plans are? I debate. Should I? No, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Because what will happen is, if you tell him, he's a logical, an analytical person, and he's going to tell you all of these things and present all these reasons why, these all these hypotheticals of why you shouldn't do what you're about to do. So I'm not going to tell him. That's what I decided. Don't tell him. Because otherwise he's going to put the fear of God into you, and you're not going to carry through with this thing that you have to do before you die. It's not on his list, but it's on yours. <laughs> so don't tell me. So we spend our, our first evening there checking out the sights and scenes of Miami, Florida. The next day, important piece, we go through customs. And now we're that much closer to boarding the ship. So we've gone through customs. We've got our carry-on bags. The bag people have taken our heavy luggage away from us. So we've got our bags. We've got, we're filled with hunger pains. Mike is always hungry, and I'm a close second. So the first thing we do when we board the ship is make a beeline for the Lido deck, because that's where everybody gathers. It's the only dining place that's open on the ship when everybody gets on. So we board the, board the ship, we head right for the Lido deck, we go on, and there's a smorgasbord of food all over the place. So do you want hot dogs? Do you want hamburgers? Do you want... Do you want uh, uh, veggies? What is it you want? It's there. It's fruit. It's, there's everything that you can possibly imagine. So all you have to do is just dive in. So we gorge ourselves with this beautiful food. The belly's full. We decide now it's time to head to our room. So we go up the stairs. We decide to, not to take the elevators. The elevators are fanned. All these people are starting to board the ship, and we're all this congestion, we're all moving about at the same time like a bunch of mummies, you know. <laughs> so we decide, let's just take the stairs. We're happy, we're gleeful. We bounce up the stairs like kid children, get to our room. Mike's already got the key out, of course, all the way up. As if I didn't know, he goes, well, I got this, I got the key. And I'm like, well, I saw that as soon as we got out. As soon as we came out of the dining room, I saw you pull your key out. But anyway, he's prepared. We go in the room. Like two children, we take our carry-on bags off our shoulders, Gleefully throw them onto the bed, stuff scattering to the floor. There goes the lip balm. There goes the, the uh, coveted uh, 
crossword puzzle book that Mike, you know, does every morning, ritually. It's on the floor. No longer do we care about these things, okay? <laughs> so, that we have so carefully packed the night before, and even that morning, making sure they were all tucked in, and now we've thrown everything out of the bed, and now onto the floor. First thing Mike does is head, heads to the, the heavy door that leads out into the deck. So we have our own kind of little balcony. So he opens the door and steps out. Next thing you know, I've run, made a beeline for the bathroom because that's my next stop. Before I can even get out of the bathroom, Michael's shouting to me, Cheryl, come, come here, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. Hold on just a second, but come on now, you're gonna miss it. I'm like, can I get my pants up, please? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I get my, pull myself together and I cross the threshold out onto the deck. Where we're looking at this vast expanse of ocean and all the, all the people still down below at the port and the ship is pulling in its last, the anchors, pulling in the anchors and getting ready for, for debarkation. So it's four o'clock, it's nearing. The horn begins to sound. We set sail. So now, what's our next plan of, of action? What are we gonna do next? Well, we've gotta book that shore excursion, okay? The one I haven't told Michael about, what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna swim or I'm gonna stay ashore? So we go down to the Lido, we go down to the, the lower deck, make our arrangements for our shore excursions. Michael's decided he's going to Mayan ruins. We're in Cozumel, Mexico, of course. He's going to the Mayan ruins. I want the Mayan ruins too, but I have decided the other event is much more important for me because it's on my do before I die list. So I book my shore excursion, which is going to be, hold on, she's going snorkeling. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my ticket. Next morning, I'm on to the gangplank, out of the pier, ready for my excursion. I get there, there's not one person with a smoking sign, but there are two men standing out there with a smoking sign. So all of a sudden, I had this pit in the bottom of my stomach of anxiety and fear, and I'm like, oh my. There's two of them. There's only supposed to be one snorkeling excursion as far as I'm concerned. What do I do? So I walk up to the first guy, and I say, what, what is your snorkeling excursion? What's the difference between yours and that guy over there? He says, well, that guy over there, he's just going to take people across the shore, over shore there, and they're going to get on the beach, and they're going to go snorkeling like that. So I said, well, what is this book? What are you doing? Well, this one, we're going to go out to the reef, and you are going to dive off the back of the boat, and you are going to swim, and you're going to see all the coral and, you know, fish and the starfish and all this great stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't think so. He said, like, let me see your ticket. That's why. I Andy, my ticket, he looks at it. He says, hmm, you belong to me. And I say, excuse me, I belong to no one, okay? I am not going on your boat, and I'm not going out to a reef, and I'm not going to jump off, because I am inexperienced. I thought I was doing what the group over there was doing with the other guy, okay? So I get on this boat, end up, I am on the boat. Who's the last one off the boat? All these experienced snorkelers are jumping off like little fish <laughs> into the water with their little fins. Last thing I can see is flapping the fins, and then I'm the last one, and they go, it's time. We have to go. And I'm like, yeah, I can't. I haven't done this before. I thought I was gonna be on a sandy beach, and I was gonna walk out there, and I was gonna just snorkel like that at my own you know, level. So suddenly, they tell me, I have no other options. My husband's climbing the mountains somewhere in my rooms. He doesn't care if I'm gone or not, or if I'm gonna live or die. <laughs> so I decide, I'm gonna do this. This is on your list of things to do. Remember you said before you die, if you die doing it, well, it's all good. Go for it. Take the dive. First thing I do, immediately slink, sink. And I start gurgling and I go, <laughs> and they go, calm down, please. You may, you know, calm down. We're not going to let you die. We're not going to let you die. I had already bought a camera. I was all ready for this adventure. So what do I do? I go for it. I've got my underwater camera. I begin to relax. I'm like, you know how to swim. Just go for it. So at the end of the day, it's either 
swim or stay ashore. And this girl swam. <laughs>